welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. Nowadays, I'm exploring the Boeing 7787 Max in the simulator and in this regard, I'm making a series of videos for the beginner so that I can just break down all the information related to a flight for this plane into different videos which will make it easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. Before this, I've uploaded videos in which I've shown you how to uh, configure the FMC or the flight management computer of this plane, how to start it from the golden dark state, how to fly it on autopilot, ILS approach and landing, and RNAV approach and landing. So today I'm doing this short flight from uh, Dubai to Qatar. And uh, in this video, I will show you uh, how to fly an approach when there is a discontinuity. So I have specifically selected Qatar for this because uh, this has a discontinuity. So usually uh, what I'll do is this in the flight plans, I will delete this discontinuity if I go to this option legs. And let me just uh, change uh, the position of the sun so that the FMC is clear. Okay. So if you go to the next page, you will see that uh, there are vectors and then there is a discontinuity. And then there is an approach. Let me just also open this uh, approach. Eyeless. So legma is the intermediate fix and then you have the final approach fix. Drag required, I think. Speed brakes are required. Let me just activate the speed brakes. Although the transition altitude is 13,000 feet for this uh, uh, runway uh, or for this airport, but uh, you can see standard is orange right now, but I will just change the barometer pressure after this point. Now, um, I will now show you that how you will uh, fly this uh, approach. Let me just uh, be over here <laughs> at this point and uh, then I will just take you from there that how you will perform this approach. Now soon the plane will be crossing this point and uh, you see that vectors is mentioned over here. So after this point, the plane will actually stop following the flight plan and it will just fly straight. You can also change this view on the navigation display. Bring your cursor over here and uh, you see the CTR, just uh, hold it with the left mouse button, press it with the right one. And now you have a good view of the flight because now I have to set the heading bug. So let's uh, bring it over here. You can see, oops, sorry, this heading bug is over here. So let's uh, set it to 157, which is the current heading of the plane because now I will be head flying in this heading mode. And then in order to intercept this line, I will turn 90 degrees left. Although you will get this uh, instruction from the ATC or the heading from the ATC, but I'm just doing it myself right now. I have tried these uh, flights with the Beyond ATC and it works perfectly all right. You get the heading from the ATC. So I will uh, make a video in the future in which I will take you through all the procedures for the Beyond ATC. So now let's uh, wait for it. You can see the ILS frequency is there, 110.1. And uh, you can see the ILS indicator is even showing over here. Let me just extend the flaps. If I change the view, now you will see that uh, the plane is just going straight. So right now, what I can do is this. I can go to the heading mode and the plane will keep on flying straight. Now I will turn left 90 degrees. So let's move this heading bug over here. Oops, sorry. I will keep it at 60. And if you look at uh, the FMA, or the flight mode in NCADA, you will see that the navigation mode is now heading select. And altitude is 2500 because at this point, legma, you should be at 2500. 
now the runway is towards the left side if i activate lnav now you will see that the heading select mode is active and lnav is locked or armed so now i can then again adjust the heading and try to intercept this point and then the plane will start to follow this point there is one thing that you can do otherwise let's try another thing you see this button let me just change the view this is vor lock so it actually uh, enables the plane to follow the localizer now in this mode uh, the plane will actually follow this uh, flight path but it will not follow the glide slope in order to do that you have to activate approach also but right now as i want to follow this flight plan i have activated localizer and let's see if the plane intercepts this line will it start to follow it automatically or not so i don't have to adjust the heading let's wait for it and let's see if this thing works otherwise i can just go back to the heading mode and then fly in this heading and try to intercept it by activating lnav and now you can see the plane has started to turn left towards the runway so it's that easy i can just go back to this view so Uh, this is the function of this uh, button we were lock the magic button but remember this thing it will not enable the plane uh, to follow the glide slope it will just uh, do the lateral navigation not the vertical one and uh, as soon as i'm near this point when this diamond will come in the middle then i can activate approach or maybe i can activate approach right now so approach uh, performs this function of uh, this button we are lock and also follows the glide slope so i can now activate approach and now you can see we are lock is there and uh, fmc speed it's controlled by the autopilot i can extend the flaps further let's uh, wait for the plane to follow this glide slope again you can uh, adjust the heading bug in case of a missed approach you might be flying based on the heading so that's why this heading should be correct and uh, for the missed approach the altitude is 4000 you can increase the altitude plane will not actually go to the altitude but you have to arm it in case of a missed approach you will be climbing up to the altitude and now the plane has started to follow the glide slope now the speed is no longer in the vnav mode as the approach is active so i can reduce the speed it's 141 knots for the landing so let's set it to 141 and further extend the flaps and lower the gears auto brakes set to max let's arm the speed brakes for the landing and that's it <laughs> it was easy so now if you have a discontinuity in the flight plan no need to delete it you can do it like this and everything will be good because initially i remember when i started uh, the flight simulation in xplane 11 i always used to get annoyed by this thing discontinuity and i used to think why there are discontinuities in the approach so then afterwards i learned that uh, you have to get vectors from the atc 
So now tonight I will also be making a video uh, with the Beyond ATC and uh, I will do a complete flight with the Boeing 7378 MAX with ATC just to show you that how the Beyond ATC works with this plane. So now I can uh, deactivate the autopilot and uh, try to land the plane. I can even move uh, this to approach. Adjust the course like this. So this is the glide slope and this is the later navigation. If there is any deviation, you will see it over here. I think it's not correct. Let me just start the descent. Slightly towards the left. Anyhow, I can reduce the thrust and oops, <laughs> that was a bad landing. I'm always bad at landings, but this was a terrible one. <laughs> now activate the reverse thrust, and as soon as the speed is below 80 knots, you can deactivate the reverse thrust. Anyhow, now uh, this uh, video was not about the landing, it was about <laughs> the discontinuity in the flight plan. I hope uh, this was a useful video for you, and now you will be able to. Uh, carry out this approach with the discontinuity. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section. Nowadays, I'm getting lots of uh, comments and queries on my channel and I've been um, slightly late in responding. Kindly accept my apologies in advance, but I'm trying to you know, respond to all of the queries. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.